The guy's looking at me and he's like, I'm sorry, but this is universal. <laughs> hey guys, it's the loud guys. Today we are going to react to Fluffy visits Saudi Arabia. And the last video was Fluffy visits India and that was so funny because the way he experienced India was very very interesting and the you guys were also very interesting in the comments like when we saw Fluffy saying like the cows are very holy in India and the thing is that is true but the thing is why cows are holy in India was a very debatable option what he said and the explanation he gave was not right according yeah. to us but you guys in the comments were very much supporting to us also and Fluffy also so it was very good to see that debate going on and that's what happened when new people come to our country they see all the other things they get new new explanations and they try to form their own explanations so it is very good like to uh, like explain all these things to you and hear all these things from you so i'm very excited to see what happens when fluffy visits saudi arabia and after watching the previous video i became a huge fan of fluffy and literally on that video he nailed it and i'm also so excited to watch this because in this video he's gonna say what uh what happened happen after visiting uh, uh, when he visit to Saudi Arabia and uh, literally that video was so re relatable because I am an Indian and I can relate I, I related a lot from that video and literally I enjoyed that whole video and after watching that I literally uh, love Fluffy and on that video I also told you people that I am so excited to that I wanted I want to uh, watch his another videos too and this, uh, so today I am so excited excited to watch this video because in this video i know he gonna nail it so yeah let's uh, see the video yeah if uh, fluffy visits any countries like the people of all that country would be waiting for a video like oh like we will get a video from fluffy and what will he say about our country so similarly what will fluffy say about saudi arabia so let's see oh my god it's fluffy hell yeah it is and i'm here hanging out in san diego oh california get ready for my big show tonight as you can see it's really big uh <laughs> it's not really big uh you know what i mean uh so anyways you guys this uh this weekend is the encore presentation of my special Aloha Fluffy uh, on Comedy Central. Now, Comedy Central is only available in the U.S., so for the rest of you worldwide, I want to give you guys a nice big sneak peek of the uh, of the special that is going to be eventually available on uh, DVD or if you hack it or however you get it. But I like to know that I'm I'm giving this one to you guys to enjoy. So check this out. This is my story about me going to Saudi Arabia. And uh, you'll see, there's a surprise at the end because I wasn't expecting this either. So enjoy and please share it. Have fun. It's 23 minutes long, so get ready. My agent calls me up and he says, Gabe, check it out. You're getting a request to perform in the Middle East. I go, really? Okay, cool. Army, Navy, Marines, Air Force, who? Actually, the request is coming from a prince. Run that by me again. <laughs> a prince. I said, Purple Rain? Not Prince, a Prince. <laughs> I said, how do a they know prince. me? I, I, I don't know, but they say that they know you and they want to hire you. I go, it sounds like a joke, Matt. Trust me, it sounds legit. All right, if it's legit, I'll tell you what. Give whoever a ridiculous figure and let them know that they have to wire the money today. Otherwise, <laughs> forget it. Wow. Four hours later, Gabe. What? Ridiculous just called. They got all the money. Are you serious? I'm looking at the screen, bro. They wired all of it. Next thing I know. <laughs> Welcome aboard Saudi Arabian Airlines. <laughs> Good try, Arabic. 17-hour flight, you guys, from Detroit, Michigan to Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. And just so you guys know, I didn't go by myself, okay? Martin. I took some friends with me. Martin and I. Nobody mm. from this show. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> For obvious reasons. <laughs> yeah, man, you see the crew that I travel with? Everybody's hairy, big nose, goatee, beard, crazy eyes, this. Are you kidding me? With the, all of us, we're like Osama bin Lopez. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't know what the hell uh. we are. So I took two other friends. I took one friend, his name is Edwin San Juan, who's Filipino, works clean. Oh yeah, and another buddy of mine named Larry Omaha, who's Native American, who also works clean. And, uh, all right, so, hell yeah, sure. <laughs> Hold on, I wanna look at the camera. Hey, Larry Omaha, Edwin San Juan, you guys have fans and they're here in Hawaii, get your asses over here. Anyway, um, <laughs> so we head to Riyadh. 
17 hour flight from Detroit. As soon as we get there, they flew us their first class, by the way. It was really nice. And the plane is pulling up to the gate, and you know, it's doing the whole, you know, and the tube is coming out to meet the plane. As soon as the tube touches the plane, all of a sudden, the door on the opposite side of the plane pops open, and a man in a suit gets on, and he walks over to the three of us, and he does this. What? And I'm sitting there freaking so out. So scary. Oh this is like the movies. <laughs> And they pulled us off the plane, and they escorted us to this area called VIP Baggage Clan. Wow. And it sounds kind of crazy, VIP, and I get there, and I realize, oh, they're, they're serving cookies and candy and coffee, and there's leather sofas, and it's really nice. And there's nothing but Middle Eastern businessmen there, okay? And they're all talking about me. I don't understand Arabic, but everyone in this room understands when someone's talking about you. The guy's looking at me and he's like, I'm sorry, but this is universal. And apparently this is Arabic for damn. So then this other guy walks over to me and he's holding a sign and the sign has my name on it and he's really excited. He's like, it is you, come, 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 it is you, come, 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 we go. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool, so we grab our luggage and we follow him outside to the curb. They have three Lincoln Navigator SUVs waiting for us. Wow. There's three comedians and there's three cars. We're so paranoid that we're in the Middle East, we all get in one car. <laughs> we're sitting in there. <laughs> And we take off. We're heading towards downtown Riyadh, okay? Now all I know up to this point about my experience is that I've already been paid, my flight's been taken care of, and I have a point person who I'm supposed to meet at the airport who's not there. So I'm talking to the driver, I said, excuse me sir, where's, where's, where's this guy? It is okay, hey, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. It's okay. Oh, who's that person? Okay. And for me it's not okay because I researched Saudi Arabia and you know, you think the rules in Singapore are strict. <laughs> the rules in Saudi Arabia are very, very different, yes. okay? And I don't wanna offend anyone and I wanna make sure that I don't say the wrong thing. So I need to know, you know, some, some I need some info. So I keep talking to the driver, I said, um, sir, would you mind helping me with some questions? Whatever you need, you ask, I tell you, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Um, <laughs> I apologize in advance if I come across rude or disrespectful or ignorant, but um, how do you guys know about me here in the Middle East? What do you mean, how do we know? Yeah, how do you know that I'm a comedian? Do you have Comedy Central or HBO or Showtime? What is that? That's a no. That's what that is, that's a no. <laughs> how do you know that I'm an entertainer? Oh, your videos, YouTube. My friend, YouTube, you're huge. Yes. You're the number two most famous comedian in all of the Middle East. Number two. Wow. wow. I'm not a comedian, I don't kid. <laughs> no. I'm the number two most famous comedian in all of the Middle East? Yes! Who's number one? Jeff Dunham. Oh, Jeff Dunham. <laughs> yeah, I saw his video. He's also hilarious. Jeff Dunham is the number one comedian in the Middle East? You guys don't find He's him at funny. all offensive? <gasps> no. <laughs> that Arab terrorist video was so when funny. When I heard that, you guys, I was like, you know what? They get it. <laughs> they get it. So I'm like, we're cool. We're sitting, we're driving, we're heading towards downtown. All of a sudden, the driver cuts the wheel really hard and we get off the freeway and now we're taking a side road going away from the city. And I'm like, oh, excuse oh. me, where are we going? We are going to the show. I go, um, it says here that we're staying in the city. Yes, you're staying in the city, but the show is somewhere else. That doesn't make sense. Why would you have the show somewhere else? How come you don't have it in the city? And then he broke it down. My friend, here in Riyadh, it is very different, okay? Uh, your type of entertainment is forbidden in the city. There are people called religious police that hold up the uh, traditions. They keep it so that it's very traditional. Oh. It is not allowed. The social gathering is a no-no. We must go somewhere secret in the desert. <laughs> this is so scary. 
all right. Um, so how many people are you guys expecting at the show? Easily between seven to eight hundred people. That many? I told you, number two. <laughs> <laughs> and sure enough, you guys, we pull up to this racetrack in the middle of the desert, and there's a, there's a giant tent set up next to it, and there's there's eight hundred people roughly there for a comedy show. And as soon as we pull up, as soon as we pull up. <laughs> Radios start popping out. And I keep hearing on all the radios. It's fluffy. 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 All of a sudden, some guy runs up on the stage and they hand him a microphone and he starts yelling to the crowd. I don't know what he's saying, but I've seen enough hip hop to recognize a hype man. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's out there. And then I get the biggest introduction of my life. Wow. And now, direct from the United States of America, here he is, Gabriel Iglesias. And the crowd starts going, fluffy, fluffy, fluffy. Wow. And when I heard that, I freaked out. I was like, oh my God, this is going to be an amazing show. So I ran to the stage as fast as I could. And if I I'm not a runner. <laughs> I booked it to the stage, you guys, because I was so excited. And when I got to the front, it clicked that in Saudi Arabia, they still have segregation. And I didn't find out till the last second because I saw a line going down the middle. And on one side, men. Other side, women. Ooh. And all the women in the front row were covered from head to toe. All I saw was this. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I had no Ooh. idea I was performing for Assassin's Creed. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Assassin's Creed. It threw me off so bad. Give it a And I, hey, what's going on, everybody? How you? <laughs> I froze. Culture shock. I've been doing this for 15 years. I don't freeze, but that threw me off so bad. I didn't know what to say. All of a sudden, men start yelling my jokes at me. My friend, do the donkey, do the donkey. <laughs> hey, chocolate cake, Look at chocolate the cake. Guy in the front, make fun of me. Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> and the people started laughing. The women were laughing just as hard as the men. You know, granted, some of them I couldn't see, but for the most part, it's like, and I'm not trying to be disrespectful. You know, they're laughing, moving and laughing. I even had fun with one of the girls. I said, oh, I saw your neck. And she said, you're going to get me in trouble. <laughs> the Saudis had such an amazing sense of humor. They were laughing and carrying on, and I had no idea they were going to be like that. And then after the show, I got a chance to meet some of the locals. And one guy was almost in tears. He was so emotional. He walks up to me, and he's wow. just like, <laughs> I cannot believe that I am standing here in front of you, Mr. Fluffy. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. Please, please, when you return to United States or wherever you travel, let the people know what you saw, okay? Let them know that we are not all bad, that we are not all those bad people from Fox News, okay? <laughs> you let them know, because we see Fox News, and Fox News believes that everybody in Middle East is bad, everybody's terrorist. He has a bomb. He has a bomb. He has a bomb. He has a bomb. Oprah is here giving away bombs to everybody. Everybody. That is the kind of image you have of Saudi Arabia and Middle East. Please, you let them know. We are not all bad people, okay? We are not all terrorists. My cousin. My cousin. Maybe. What? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Look at your face. Look at your face. Oh, I'm going to die. Look at you. <laughs> I'll play, we'll play. I got you again! Two for two, I got you! And he is raising my blood pressure every seven seconds. What a guy, man. And then he starts breaking it down for me how stand-up comedy is starting to bring people together in the Middle East. And how he's starting to, do, you know, he's doing comedy. It's, it was crazy, the conversation. You know, here in, the, in Saudi Arabia, um, uh, people, they, they like uh, watching the, the stand-up comedy because uh, we love to laugh, okay? We love to laugh. It's great to laugh. And uh, people don't think that uh, people in the Middle East have sense of humor. They, they see videos, they see TV, they think we are the same. They say, oh, in Middle Eastern people are all angry. Look at their face, they're angry. Everybody angry, everybody mad, everybody angry. 
my friend, we are not angry, it's hot. <laughs> okay? It's yes. 117 degrees. Everybody is not mad, they're hot. Look at everybody has a hot face. Hot face. Everybody hot face. I promise you give me air conditioning. I am so happy. <laughs> <laughs> That is actually true. We are okay. We love to laugh. I've been doing the stand-up comedy for uh, about six months now, and um, I have jokes. Good for you. May I try? Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man, go ahead. Okay, very nervous, very nervous. Okay, here we go. Okay, okay here we go. <sighs> Two Jews. <laughs> Walk into a bar. Not in my country. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> Man, you're gonna get my ass arrested, bro. <laughs> we wound up doing shows all over the Middle East. We were in uh, Riyadh, Bahrain, Dubai, Qatar, Doha, and each show, you guys, was more amazing than the last show. Not because there were so many people, but because the people were friendly. They were fun. They uh -huh. got all the references. I couldn't get over that. I honestly thought that they were gonna be like the people from Fox News. <laughs> and I felt terrible. I felt terrible because I was judging them. I was prejudging them and I thought that they were gonna be a certain way and I felt bad because all those years people were doing that to me, not really giving me a chance and I was over there doing the same thing. I felt so bad. And then when I met the prince, I was still judging. 19 years old and he's a prince. I thought he was gonna be a brat. He walks up to me and I was already like, what's up? <laughs> I failed to realize that he's a prince and he was brought up to be a prince. The way he carried himself, he intimidated me in about 18 seconds. What? Okay, I'm 36. <laughs> and I'm, you know, what's up? And he's like, Jibril. Excuse me? Gabriel. Jibril. <laughs> Jibril. <laughs> Gabriel. Gabriel. I understand that your name is Gabriel, but in the Arabic language, your name is Jibri. Oh. I was welcoming you in our language. Oh! <laughs> that anxiety. Oh, dick. <laughs> and I started already imagining what was going to happen. I'm like, ah, Jibri! <laughs> I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. And he was so nice, you guys. He's like, I want to thank you for coming here to Riyadh and doing all of these shows. It was so beautiful to see everyone having such an amazing time, from the little children in attendance, all the way to the elderly people with a cane. Everyone had an amazing time, everyone. It was beautiful, okay, beautiful. Religious people, laughing. Religious police, laughing. They don't laugh at shit. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to understand how big this is. There was an American here entertaining people from Middle East. There was no violence, no bloodshed, no problems. Everybody was smiling. Everybody was getting along. It is possible. An American was here. An American was here. He kept saying American, American, American. American. Freaking 10 years being called a Latino comic. I had to go all the way around the world to finally get called American. Wow. <laughs> I was excited. I was like, say it again, American. <laughs> and then I had the most surreal conversation I have ever had with the person. He looks at me and he says, I want to thank you for everything. I want to invite you and your friends to come to my palace so that I may entertain you. Wow. Like, are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> I am not getting invited to a palace by a prince. Oh my God, up until this point, my only experience with royalty was a Burger King drive-thru. <laughs> All of a sudden, one of those SUVs pulls up. Wow, and a guy man. jumps out in a suit, and I guess his favorite word was please, because that's all he said. Please. 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 <laughs> this also please. happens in India. Please. Please. I'm like, are you kidding me? There's a man in a suit trying to get me in the back of a Lincoln Navigator and there's a prince inviting me to his palace. I'm not gonna lie, I felt like a hot chick. Oh. I didn't, I was like, oh my God, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Hurry up, bitch, let's go. 
Vanjika, have you experienced something like this? We get to the front of his palace, you guys. I'm not gonna lie, it didn't look like a palace. The walls are really high. There's barbed wire around the entire property, oh. and there's two guys in the front with machine guns. Wow. I'm looking at this, and I'm like, this doesn't look like a palace. <laughs> and I started thinking, what if I'm on some messed up episode of Middle Eastern punked? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you don't go to palace, you go to prison, you're punked! Wow. <laughs> Fortunately, the doors opened up, and we drive in, and then they closed. And when we got outside, you guys, what we saw was amazing. Outside, Desert, inside, palm trees, bushes, shrubs, a pond, and he wow. had exotic pets. I know exotic pets, because I know what I have. <laughs> Over there. He's got a tiger! <laughs> freaking zebra, monkeys. And he had a freaking boa constrictor. I'm like, are you kidding me? Snakes? Monkeys, a zebra, and a tiger? Oh my god, that makes me Kung Fu Panda. The way he roasts himself is very good. And I started thinking, what if he decides to keep me? It sounds messed up, but let me explain. As an American, you cannot just purchase an airline ticket to go to Saudi Arabia. You have to be invited by a person of power. You know, when I left Detroit to go over there, I had to fill out a form that says, I understand that I'm going to Saudi Arabia. And should something happen to me, oh. one of those things on the list being kidnapping, conveniently right above death, <laughs> America is not responsible. The prince could have actually, you're mine. And two weeks later, now he's showing someone else around, right? That is my snake, that is my zebra, that is my Mexican, that is my tiger. He said of some little box that says Jibril. <laughs> <laughs> but it never happened. And we're walking around, and I actually pulled him aside for a second. I said, listen, uh, I gotta tell you something. Well, you tell me. I, I need to apologize. Oh, what? what did you do? I didn't do anything. I just want to apologize for coming here with the wrong mentality. I says, unfortunately, I thought that, uh, just, you know, because it is the Middle East, I thought you guys were gonna be rude and everybody's been nothing but nice. Huh? I know. <laughs> I didn't think you guys were gonna speak English so well and understand, you know, so many references and you guys get everything. Huh? I know. <laughs> I thought you guys were gonna throw rocks. But you were funny. <laughs> what? If you wouldn't have been funny. What? Never mind. Then? Two out of three, why aren't <laughs> So we're walking, and uh, he's showing me this and that, and I'm just kind of like looking around. I thought it was great, and then I saw something that freaked me out. We're walking in the direction of a giant cage. And when I saw the cage, I stopped. I was like, ah! Uh, what's with the cage? Take a look. Great. So I walk over towards the cage and I look inside there and I notice that there's birds in there. And I was like, oh, okay, cool, it's a bird cage. And he got all offended, you know. That's not regular birds. Those are falcons. I go, okay, well, you have a lot of falcons. Oh, well, you use the falcons for hunting. You hunt falcons? No, 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 no. Each falcon is very expensive. 100,000 US dollars. They are trained. We go out and we shoot a little animal and we send a falcon to retreat. Oh. Would you like to see? No, 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 no. I got little dogs. I don't want to. <laughs> Bye, Bruno! <laughs> Before I know it, here comes the other guy. Please, 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 please. And he goes inside the cage and he puts on this leather glove that comes up to his elbow and he starts getting one of the falcons. I'm watching him do this and I notice all the falcons are on these perches about this high and there's about 15 in a row and they all have hoods covering their eyes. And I asked them, why do they have hoods on their eyes, man? They look like little hostages. <laughs> Shit. Woo! I'm sorry, bro. I'm sorry. I meant no disrespect by that, man. <laughs> Seriously. No. Continuously no offending them? I, it was a slip. And he was cool. I understand. Middle East hostage. <laughs> <laughs> So the other guy comes out and he's got a falcon with him and he's got a glove and he hands me the glove and I put it on and he transfers his falcon to my arm. And uh, all of a sudden he starts doing snapping things and he's basically showing me that the falcon's trained. And I thought that was great. I thought we were gonna kill something. I'm like, no, but we were just playing with the falcon. And I started getting excited. 
you know? And the more excited I got, the more the prince started showing his age. Because then he got excited. I'm like, this is great. It is great. Yes, this is so cool. So cool. Oh my God, you're so lucky to have so many falcons. I am so lucky. Would you like a falcon? <laughs> so matter of fact, like, would you like a cookie? Would you like a falcon? Same way. <laughs> I'm like, are you kidding me? Don't give me a falcon that can retrieve things. Shoo, you think I'm lazy now. <laughs> Love you, use it for no, everything. Don't give me a, oh, no, uh. I wouldn't even leave the house. I'd be at the front door. Yes. Just, donuts. <laughs> yes. And who the hell is gonna watch my falcon when I'm up here performing? I can't leave it with my buddy Martin in the back. You know he would abuse it, take it to some nightclub, try to hook up with it, freaking here. <laughs> <laughs> I do believe Fluffy is one of those guys, one of few guys whom people of every religion, caste, uh, and country loves. And this guy is so hilarious. His sense of humor is also so good. And literally, he nailed the whole video. And but I don't know what is Falcon. I think uh, I think they look like a eagle. Maybe I don't know if you people know. Then please let us know in the comment box. Uh, pardon, do you know wh uh, uh, what are fal falcons? Yeah, falcons are majorly big birds, and they capture all those things. And like they are trained by the Saudi, so they can get all those things for them. So that uh, is very are nice. Are they look like a uh, like an eagle? I think so. They look like more of a pelican. I can say like the one with the big mouth. I feel like it. I don't know much about it. I'll also search about it more. Ah, uh, okay. And uh, literally, I enjoyed the whole video. And to be honest, what I really liked about him is his obviously sense of humor and mostly his uh, his joke is uh, based on the real based experiences. And uh, I. I observed that he used very less adult jokes and his jokes are basically family, family relatable joke. Even uh, everyone can, uh, you know, everyone can watch uh, his videos. Uh, I really love his jokes and his sense of humor is also so good. And to be honest, I literally enjoyed the whole video and maybe uh, we will see his uh, uh, another videos. And I just searched it online like Falcon looks like a pigeon only and not, not like a pigeon, it looks like a eagle and like it captures all those things so i think so this is how they train it like they train it to capture yeah all those i things told a, i told an eagle only not not a yeah 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 it yeah. does look like an eagle so you were right and the thing is the whole story was so good like with fluffy it is like you have to you can relive all the all the things that he has gone through like when he said about india you can relive what he did in india and similarly with saudi arabia like whatever he said like whatever prejudices he had with saudi arabia we too also have the same prejudice like we do feel like if we go to Saudi Arabia, if we do some or the other bad thing that we could be punished very badly, like saying something against Muslims or doing anything that is like can be religiously hurtful or doing anything can lead to very, very bad consequences. So we to have that prejudice, like I too want to visit Saudi Arabia now and want to feel the welcomeness and want to feel the yeah. how it is actually in Saudi Arabia. But the experiences that uh, like Fluffy had, he was like, I was like, give me the first give me first the money like in four hours he got all the money and he was like welcomed like a king and he visited the palace and everything was so good like in between he was always trying to make those jokes like oh, why are you keeping those words like hostages and like what is this palace like and but the thing was like all the Saudi people were getting their jokes and they were ha happily laughing at it and they were making fun of it so it was very very good and the thing is Jeff Dunham is the number one comedian in Saudi Arabia and the second number is Fluffy so like both are comedians that are very good sarcastically and they make very good sarcastic jokes so you have to be good in your senses to understand those jokes also so i think so i need to visit saudi arabia and i need to see how cool it is and we also need to like get away of those prejudices so how did you guys find this video do let us know in the comment section below so do like share and subscribe bye, bye.